My husband thinks I'm cheating on him for extra money, but I just found out his dark secret. Where are you getting that money from? My husband and I, 33 male and 33 female, are fairly high income earners, both around 200K a year each. Hey. Wow. Um, we own our home free and clear, have no other debts of any kind. We save close to half our income and most finances are joint, but we allocate $1,500 a month each, plus any extra income such as bonuses or side hustles for fun money. That's hobbies, luxury goods, outings with our friends that aren't together, et cetera, et cetera. Husband tends to spend his fun money month to month due to his expensive hobbies, primarily golf, while I tend to save the majority of mine because of my interests, such as running and baking, which are much less expensive. I've been getting back into gaming lately though and having saved up more than enough of my fun money i spent five grand on a new gaming rig and a really nice desk and chair but my husband blew a gasket and accused me of financial infidelity even though i was operating within what i thought was our agreed upon rules by spending my own allocated fun money on hobby stuff now we are about to dive into a saga of updates here but i've never heard of financial infidelity which but i I'm guessing it's like you're <laughs> you're cheating on the money or, or maybe you have a sugar daddy for money on the side. Maybe that's what he's implying or maybe it's simply just money that's being spent outside of what they have agreed upon. It's like, hey, if you are going against like a relationship, hey, there's trust, there's you know boundaries, maybe some rules in place. Maybe if you're spending outside of those trust boundaries and rules of the financial setup and relationship, then that's cheating. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious if anyone in the comments below has heard of or interacted with financial infidelity, which I guess like if someone goes and just blows a ton of your money on something, your husband goes and spends hundred grand out of nowhere. I mean, that's <laughs> as, as an example, <laughs> as a crazy example, financial infidelity or cheating. I mean, that's yeah, I could see. I could, I could see like financial infidelity being like you hang out with this like old guy and or like you just have dinner. Sugar there's, daddy, sugar mama. There's nothing going on. Yeah, this is interesting. I've, I've never really heard of this either. Neither have I, but let's learn more about it. Update. My husband told me that he was actually really upset that he feels I'm not professionally ambitious enough. Yikes. Because I'm not on the executive track like he is, despite my working full time. He wanted me to cook fancier meals and set the table in a more elegant way and dress up for dinner yes like a 1950s housewife bro <laughs> what like dude I, I i love how like he's literally just like yeah 1950s housewife like some people try to like skirt around it but bro is literally just like i i want you to be my maid yeah i want you to be like the 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 night you know the super like 1950s idea of like you are my wife and you just take care of me and and do everything i i don't I like I, I I get it. I get like wanting a nice meal here and there, but like it's a it's it goes both ways. Like you cook a nice meal, they cook a nice meal. It, it's not like you yeah, I it yeah. doesn't make sense. I've always like I got so used to doing my own meals and doing everything that anything on top of me doing everything myself feels like a bonus. Yeah. Like I'm like happy. I'm like, oh wow, this is great. Like I'm so thrilled and I have no expectation whatsoever of this. Like I it's literally just turn the table around the other way. It's like like, hey, just make all my meals. And then he's like, no. And it's like, exactly. What are we talking about? Also, use like a, maybe get like a chef or something if you're making 400 yeah. grand a year. Yeah. Oh, 100%. On to another update. Hi, all. I have an additional and probably not very surprising update to my saga. So the more I thought about it, the more his requests and demands really were sitting poorly with me. Good. I decided to try a little experiment over the weekend to see what would happen if I tried to meet some of his demands. Ooh, interesting. A little social experiment. Not because I actually thought they were reasonable, but because I increasingly had the sense that the goalposts would just keep moving and that I was playing a losing game. You are a smart cookie, OP. So Saturday morning, I went to the salon for glow up, haircut, fresh highlights, mani pedi. Then I went to the farmer's market to pick up fresh flowers for our table and assorted other gourmet ingredients. Saturday is usually our date night out, but I suggested we stay in so I could make us a special dinner. Steakhouse style, lobster bisque, bread basket with several types of rolls and savory muffins made from scratch, crab stuffed mushrooms, filet mignon, au gratin potatoes, white chocolate mousse topped with raspberries. My 
God. Opie, I couldn't name those dishes, let alone have ever cooked anything close to it. Lobster is the closest thing I've made for my girlfriend on Valentine's Day. Oh, nice. Bro, I'm being put to shame over here on a social experiment. But shout out to Opie. She's, she's chefing it up. I wore lavender, his favorite color on me, sheath dress and high heels with fully done hair and makeup. For all that, I got a lukewarm, thanks, it was tasty, and a kiss on the cheek. Of course, I did all the serving and cleanup. Ah. Damn, I mean, her test worked. Sunday, we usually go out, but he suggested that I make us brunch at home. So I made French press coffee, mimosas with fresh squeezed oranges. Like, Riley, I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, Belgian waffles and bananas foster topping, eggs scrambled with Parmesan and fresh herbs from our garden, roasted fingerling potatoes and maple glazed bacon. Cheese. I wore a blue sleeveless sundress, wedge sandals, and again, did my hair and makeup. Again, I got a thanks. It's good. And no help with serving or cleanup. I would be dying of happiness. Dying of happiness. I would not know what to do with myself. What is going on? Afterwards, I asked if this is what he had in mind when he critiqued me before. He said that it was a start, but that I was acting very entitled for wanting credit for basic adulting for creating a five-star meal? I mean, this is literally like Mich Michelin star level stuff right here, ladies and gentlemen. Like you basically, you have to become better than Gordon Ramsay. That's what I'm getting. I feel like basic adulting is like getting at least one meal in a day. Basic, yeah, basic adulting is like buying groceries. Yeah. That is basic and not like, you know, Uber Eats or whatever, like every day, but like, dude, dude. <laughs> He then dropped a bomb that he's being so hard on me lately because he realized that I had a lot to make up for due to me being a low value woman. I asked what on earth he meant by that. And he said it was because I was not a virgin when we met. Wow. What does that have to do with anything? That's the question, Riley. <gasps> Opie says, what? Keep in mind, we started dating at 21. Neither of us claimed to be virgins or stated that as an expectation. Except for very religious people, neither of us is. I don't think that most 21-year-old college students are virgins. Correct. I was up front with him and then said that I'd had two previous partners. My high school boyfriend, we went our separate ways when we went to different colleges in different parts of the country. And another boyfriend that I had in my first year of college and that's it both committed relationships and nothing casual ah <sighs> op's husband what are you doing he then went on to say that because of my low value i was going to need to be making it up for him for the rest of my life that i didn't deserve monogamy or equal treatment and that i was lucky that anyone at all wanted to marry me and that he's connected with someone from work so if i wanted to keep up i better step it up Oh, oh my God. What planet, bro? He went to planet Tate and just, just planted his flag and just, be, he just colonized that planet, took everything he could and just returned back to earth, bro. <laughs> What, bro. Where is he getting this from? He, he has been on the Andrew Tate bandwagon. That's, <sighs> I don't really, that checks out. I'm in shock, Riley. You you gave us a crazy one today. <laughs> you delivered today. I told him it didn't sound like there was anything to keep if he no longer loved me or even liked or respected me. Told him I told him to leave and he said he would gladly go to his girlfriend's place. I know so many people here insisted he was having an affair and I just didn't want to see it. That his complaints were really part of a campaign to distance himself from me. I feel so foolish for just thinking he was going through a stressful time at work or that he genuinely wanted to work on our marriage. Anyway, I have taken the week off from work to get my head together. Having, I have an appointment with my lawyer tomorrow. I canceled the marriage counseling appointment, but got a referral to an individual therapist who can help do an intake session with me later this week. He and the girlfriend apparently are coming this evening to get more of his clothes and things, so I have to brace myself for that. Also, please be assured, I do not think I am low value in any way. I let my husband make me think less of myself on some levels for a short time, but now I truly see it was a him problem. Girl, thank God. Wow, because you you are a prize. You are a prize. Opie, a treasure to be found and adored. 100%. I know that divorce 
won't be fun or easy, but I will be okay. Thank you all who are helping me see that I was being played before and I wasted too much time in a marriage that was already over. Wow. Um, and we have a quick relevant comment. One last gem from the husband. Yes, it seems like he fell down a toxic masculinity hole at some point fairly recently. Retroactively punishing me for not being a virgin at the outset after a 12 year relationship, including 10 of those years being marriage is just completely over the top. I even said, so this person you connected with at work is actually a virgin? The person who's cheating on you, who probably knows you have a wife? Hmm? Well, she was, he said with a smirk. Uh -huh. So virgin or not, someone who would sleep with a married colleague is higher value than me again, again. Unless he lied about his marital status last situation, which I wouldn't put it past him. That is a fair point. Um, yes, he admitted to having an affair for several months. He kept trying to say that it doesn't really count as cheating because I'm low value. So the standards are different. Wow. This is... This is the executive track, man. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Bro, he's on the executive track to getting dumped. <laughs> On to the update. Hi, all. I wasn't going to post another update, at least not this soon, but I have gotten dozens of DMs and messages asking if I'm okay and how things are going. So this is specifically in response to those who are checking in on me. Boom. He was supposed to come get his stuff on Tuesday evening a couple days ago, but told me at the last minute he couldn't because Amy, his girlfriend, wasn't feeling well. Oh, poor Amy. Oh, my God. Some people called in the comments, but yes, she's pregnant, apparently. Oh, no. Oh, oh, that makes God. things way more spicy. That good God, it does, Riley. It does. He told me this on text, so I have proof of the affair in writing now. That is good, I guess. And it's not just his word against mine. Anyway, I didn't want him to keep jerking me around on the schedule for whatever reason. So I told him I'd pack his stuff for him and arrange for movies. I think it's better that way. I really don't want him slash them in the house. I would not either. Yeah. No. I already had arranged for a friend to come over on Tuesday when he and Amy were supposed to come by. So the two of us spent the evening packing his clothes and other personal effects. The movers came yesterday and got the boxes and furniture items that he wanted. He didn't want much, just the stuff from his home office and his dresser, as apparently Amy's apartment is small. Who's high value now? Riley, you know what would be crazy? If high value meant like earning 200 grand a year or owning your home outright you know that what what if we what if we attributed value t to money i know it's a crazy idea i know it's insane but i mean it doesn't sound like it coordinates could we li it's too it's too much right i mean it's too big of a stretch riley it all is based on your sexual status wow mm -hmm. i provided a detailed inventory and photos of everything which he approved so he can't say that I broke or otherwise ruined his stuff. Also very smart. And after that, yesterday, I went to the clinic to get STI tests. I won't have the results for a week, but thankfully I haven't had any symptoms. Oh my God. And I met with a lawyer who said I had a good case for grounds of adultery and mental cruelty if I want slash need to go that route. At a minimum, it's leverage to get him to settle quickly and quietly, which honestly, I got a question, Riley and everyone watching. You have these things you could do in the case. Do you just go full petty mode and just twist the knife? I mean, honestly, yeah. Or is it worth it? Yeah. I, I think it would be worth it. I mean, she's doing fair off, but yeah. like... She didn't need it. She, but he's like degrading her for no reason. I would definitely twist the knife. Just like get everything you can out of it. Because then a jury has to hear all of the things that OP is sharing here. Yeah. Yeah, the jury. Yeah. Unless you got like a crazy lawyer, which they both have crazy money. That's true. It, it, we really are Ooh. fighting fire with fire. You bring up a great point, Riley. We are fighting fire with fire. But OP has crazy ammunition. Yeah, that's true. Right? They have the same soldiers, but she has like nuclear bazooka ready to ready to blow, ready to squeeze the trigger. She has the receipts. She has the receipts, dude. I also locked down all of the finances within the parameters provided by the lawyer. So he can't just empty our joint funds or take anything that belongs to me. I changed the account beneficiaries and all that fun stuff too, and changed the locks to the house. I decided to take the advice of the commenters and I am getting rid of the bed and other bedroom furniture I shared with him. 
I'm donating it. Someone is coming this afternoon to haul it all off. And I'm going to completely redecorate the bedroom to my own taste. That will take a bit staying in one of the guest rooms in the meantime. Yeah, she's so low value that she is sleeping in the guest room in her house. Wow. <laughs> I'm also taking a spa weekend away, leaving tomorrow morning and coming back Sunday just to get a change of scenery before I have to go back to work the next week. Mm. And yes, even after buying the gaming setup, I have plenty of fun money left in my account to afford the lawyer's retainer and redoing the bedroom as well as my getaway with plenty left over. So here's to frugality where it counts. I also love how now like spending money on the lawyers to like destroy your husband's life is the fun money, which yeah. it quite honestly is. It is fun, yeah, but it sucks that you have to like use it for that. Sucks that you got to use it for that. Those are the main updates for the moment. I'm doing better than expected, I think, and realizing more day by day that it really was not a good marriage. You could say that again, at least not for the last couple of years when he started expecting me to do everything around the house and all the emotional labor of running our lives outside of work with no help and little to no gratitude. Amy sure is going to have her hands full. He is going to do it to Amy tenfold. I was going to say earning 200 grand a year is hard. I just have the sneakingest suspicion that Amy being a work colleague is like, she's not like the CEO <laughs> to, to, to put it lightly. Yeah. And, and like one, I feel like Amy will start relying on him and OP's good. Cause like she has her own money. She's doing good. She has plenty of money to take care of the situation Amy sounds like she's like in a not so hot spot because she's pregnant and relying on this guy. And like whenever this happens to her, because like off the track record of yep. OP's husband, it feels like Amy's about to get a lot of heat from like the divorce and like all his stress is just going to go at Amy. And right. that's not going to be good at all. He's going to do his mental mind bending and be like, why is this all your fault? Yeah. Why are you making this lawsuit? Cr if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be being sued by my wife right now. Yeah. <sighs> God, this is horrible. There's an edit. Um, once again, I cannot thank everyone here enough. I need to get ready for my spa weekend away. So apologies if uh, so apologies in advance if I am not responding to your comments or DMs. But I am really grateful for all the support and encouragement. Hopefully there won't be any more notable updates for a while. I really just want a smooth and easy divorce and to get on with my life. So please keep your fingers crossed to me. Some relevant comments. The incoming child. Also, he was a hardcore child-free person before. Oh, okay. I didn't want kids either, but he was especially militant about it. I mean, maybe he changed his mind, but it doesn't seem like this was exactly a planned pregnancy. <laughs> yes. Um, plus, he can't even be bothered to put his own laundry in the hamper or put a dish in the dishwasher. How is he going to deal with an infant? Anyway, not really my problem, and I guess he'll figure it out or not. The sad thing is, who loses the most in this scenario the baby because yeah. like probably oh. what will happen is he's like uh like everything we've talked about oh you were, were my side piece and it was all fun and games but now you're like pregnant and like want to be my main thing and so i'm just gonna get a side piece unless you just do all these things for me and try but it'll never be good enough and then i'll just leave you and the child that's that's so bad I, I hate that for the kid and like the kid like hopefully hopefully op becomes like a good dad but like looking at this chances are high yeah he's not gonna be a good dad god is he her superior at work my understanding is that they are peers he isn't her boss i don't think it was against the rules for co-workers of the same level to date at least not as some of our well his really friends met at work there and it wasn't really an issue so for that reason i think i'll stay out of it especially as i do want him to stay gainfully employed until the divorce is completely final there we go yeah because then you get more more bread that way still i agree it's awfully foolish to have an affair at work that results in a pregnancy while one of the people is still married <sighs> when you put it all in a oh sentence like that i mean you can't hide that messiness it's going to be physically obvious um and then the next comment how is a 24 year old making the same amount of money as your ex they are both in the executive training program for fairly recent mba graduates amy is apparently some sort of prodigy who got hers at 21 my soon-to-be ex started out in supply chain management then the company paid for his mba which he finished a couple of years ago and after that he moved to the financial side and was accepted into the training
training program earlier this year. She's 24, apparently graduated from college at 18 and got her MBA at 21. And he just got his MBA a couple of years ago, was on a different business operation tracks before switching to finance. So, all right, she's not the intern. Yeah. <laughs> she actually, she's low key killing it. But like that, that's good though. Like that Amy won't be stuck financially with for the baby. Yeah. For the baby. You're exactly right. At least the baby won't be like left out to dry. Like Amy's very early in her career and is probably going to be able to provide pretty handsome. Also life. another thing to note, uh, OP and the husband are both 33. So a 33 right. year old with a 24 year old, but we have another update. I'm updating again here because a lot of kind people have been checking in with, with well wishes and to see how I'm holding up. Nice. Sorry for not updating sooner, but as soon as I get back from the spa weekend, as mentioned in my last update, I dove into working with my attorney on the divorce settlement Ooh. and didn't think it was wise to put my business on the internet, however anonymously, with all the legal issues up in the air. Again, very smart of OP. The good news is that we were able to come to an agreement pretty quickly and everything is now executed. Wow, I she does not play, man. She got it done. I'm just waiting for the court date, which could take another couple of months, but my lawyer says the agreement is airtight. It wasn't quite as favorable as most of you all lovely folks probably would have wanted for me, but I was highly motivated to get it done fast. I did everything that really mattered to me first. First, I did everything that really mattered to me. First, the house I inherited from my grandmother is 100% mine, along with all the furnishings and other effects in the house. My own retirement accounts and my fund money accounts are all mine as well. Otherwise, I did have to give him 75% of the other cash assets. Dang. Really? I would have at least thought like 50-50. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. Like, oh, it's quick and we just split it. But Because it's his fault. Although he wasn't on the title for the house, he did contribute substantially to the renovation we did, as well as upkeep since then then in the house has appreciated very substantially in the years we moved in. It's fine as I still have plenty of money, especially as I'm quite frugal most of the time and I can rebuild cash savings quick and I can rebuild cash savings quickly. Our agreement also states that neither of us have claim on each other's past, present or future earnings. So in case something happens and he loses his job before the court date, I won't be liable for any alimony. This is actually overall a very good deal for me and gives me a lot of security. So I guess it's like, okay, like I lose out on some of these assets but when it comes to like future earning potential and like all the potential things that could go wrong op is like safe and secure and it's just like i'd just rather have that than maybe keep a little bit of the existing assets but leave something wide open for something to go down i'm actually curious for for all of our divorcees out there <laughs> um what was your divorce arrangement like what yeah. did you get and, and and in your own personal opinion how does op's divorce settlement stack up in the world of divorces yeah like did she get a good deal or not yeah because i'm i'm just kind of guessing based on what op's saying but maybe it's maybe it's crap maybe it's amazing yeah. i don't know i'm curious to know in any divorce lawyers too i'm I'm sure we got a few of you. I'm sure we got a few of you in there. In case anyone is wondering how we got this done so quick, our state allows divorce on mutual consent grounds, which basically allows for a quick divorce without a legal separation period if the parties come to an agreement about all the finances and assets. Given that Amy is pregnant, my soon-to-be ex, let's call him Joe, yes, like the psychopath on the show You, which me and Ryan probably have been referencing recently. What have you been referencing that for again? Was it you? I did <laughs> reference it, but I forget for what it, it was, was. like. It was like, oh, yeah, dude, oh, that's, that's tragic. Comment below if you know what Riley was talking about. <laughs> so my soon-to-be ex was also very motivated to not drag this out. Now for the real dirt of the update. Last weekend, shortly after all of our papers were signed, Amy reached out to me. Uh oh. Yup. She asked if we could meet and talk. Okay, real quick predictions. I don't think things are going so well. So she's going to get like some like intel like, hey, get me out. You really do you really think she's going to help you? I don't think so. But like this poor girl's wrapped up into something and she's way too deep. <sighs> She is, dude. Kid, because if there was no kid, maybe she yeah. can skate out of it and be okay. With the kid, now it's all, you know, what if he what if he tries to get custody? What if he does absolutely nothing and just leaves and leaves OP or leaves OP, leaves Amy yeah. to be the one to, you know, pay for care for the baby, which she seems smart and capable and like financial earning, but being a single parent is not easy. It's not fun. It, it ain't fun. 
fun, y'all. Well, I guess it can be, but you know. What do you think she's going to talk about? I think she's like, he is cheating on me already. <laughs> he said, I think he's going to say exactly, just repeat verbatim a script back to Amy. It's just a whole. You're low value. You're not a virgin anymore. <laughs> Dude, he definitely has said that. But we thought the cycle was short already with like, oh, once you become go from the side piece to the main piece, that cycle could be pretty short. But as soon as you're not a virgin anymore, low value. <laughs> Virgins only. Virgins only. And as soon as I make you not a virgin, get out. Get kicked to the curb. Perhaps I should have declined. But I will admit that I was curious about this 24 year old prodigy and until recently a virgin <laughs> God. person who was Joe's affair partner. So I agreed to meet her for lunch. So the first thing is that Amy is very pregnant, like third trimester. She is confirmed. It's confirmed that she is due in mid October, which means she's had the baby by now, wow. um, which means the affair has been going on a whole lot longer than Joe let on. Whatever, it's water under the bridge as the divorce is almost final. However, after some polite but chilly pleasantries, she asked me when I'm going to be moving out of the house. <laughs> Wait a minute. Riley, we might have mispredicted over here. She might have been sent in as, you know, reconnaissance to retrieve the house. She's brainwashed, dude. Bro. And he probably just lied to her. I was like, she's going to yell at me, chew me out. She owes me the house. Just tell her to just, you know, go and sweet talk her and, you know, you're pregnant, whatever. Like sweet talk her, get on your side and then give her, give us the house. Get the house, babe. Get the house. Get our house because we're rightly, she's overstaying her time in it obviously but because surely joe has been patient enough with him giving me time to get my life together and her apartment is small and they needed space for the baby i told her she must be mistaken as the house is mine i inherited it from my grandmother but asked her what else joe told her about me and our marriage and it was actually really beautiful just kidding it was all lies ha, got lie, him. lie after lie joe lies and that's it tumbled out of her mouth along with crumbs of the real story these gems include well it was true that she and joe met at work but it was about a year ago when they were both interviewing for the executive training program that they're in now amy said though that they first became friends before getting together romantically apparently joe told her he was legally apparently joe told her that he was legally married but that we had been separated in spirit and living our separate lives since 2020 but that he didn't want to kick me out and make me homeless during the pandemic because I didn't make much money and we live with high cost of living. Joe told Amy that we met in our early 20s and that he was mentoring me in a GED prep program, that I was a high school dropout who was struggling with addiction and that he essentially rescued me helped me to get me clean, tutored me for my GED, and had been supporting me since through gradually working on college classes. He told Amy that I was working on prepping for an IT career and was currently making 45 grand a year as a help desk technician when she is making $200,000 a year, to be clear, um, and that he wanted to make sure that I could at least afford a studio apartment. He told Amy that we had separated because I had relapsed and he couldn't have a meaningful relationship with a drug addict. Uh, this is all lies. My entire history of drug use is occasionally sharing a joint in college. Maybe four to five times total. Never anything harder. He's like, listen, listen, OP relapsed in her senior year. I know she's 23. I know she's 33. I know that. But listen, she had half a joint her senior year. Can I risk her doing that again? I, Riley, I, I don't know as, as OP's filthy dirtbag husband. I don't know if I can go through it again, seeing her giggle a little bit and ask weird, funny questions. That I don't think I can recover from that. That is a hard thing to go through. I mean, that's honestly, if, if I'm if I'm being honest here, that's the hardest thing anyone's ever gone through is watching their partner share half a joint at 22 years old and then she's like laughing a little bit. Having a good time. Having a good time. That is low value. Unacceptable. Right there. Be your own drug and take it. 
<laughs> oh my god. It is true that Amy was a 24-year-old virgin prodigy. God. <laughs> what, 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 a, what a LinkedIn title. <laughs> oh my god. She seemed dismayed that Joe had told me that, although at least the virgin part. Um, she said it wasn't a moral issue. She was really just focused on school and work and didn't make any time to date. And that generally guys her age seem mostly interested in casual hookups, especially the younger finance bro types, and she just wasn't interested in that but that Joe took the time to get to know her and was actually interested in a meaningful relationship. Mm, nice. Our hero, Joe. <laughs> Joe's been a good guy here. <laughs> oh, yeah, the sweetest guy on planet Earth. I asked her if their pregnancy was planned. She said, no, of course not. But it was a miracle because Joe had a vasectomy. So they took that as a sign that they should keep the baby. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, Joe did not half a vasectomy. As we were planning to be a child-free couple, I suggested it a couple of times over the years. He firmly stated that he didn't want to alter his body like that, so he left the birth control. Is my responsibility. My man wanted to bust a nut free range. That's what that was all about. Dude, these lies. Oh my gosh. Insane. It should be illegal. It really does seem that Amy is pretty blameless here. I mean, those of us who have been around the block would likely know not to believe a guy who claims to be separated, but is still legally married and living with his wife. But without her having any dating slash relationship experience, I can see where she would take him at his word about everything, which I'll be honest, you're 24 and you've literally never had a relationship before. That's, that's, I think that's pretty reasonable and, and, and realistic. After all, I don't know anything was amiss with Joe until a couple of months ago. And I was married to him for 10 years in a 12 year relationship as well. I gotta wonder, we, what do we always say on the show, Riley? Um, the red flags had to be, had to come earlier. Where were they? Riley was just like, oh, Jesus. We say a lot of things here. Wait, wait, hold on. Like <laughs> all the things, wait, all the things you've ever said on the 2000 stories. Wait a second. Riley is sweat like he was just about to fail the pop quiz. I was like, just like going through my archives. Like we right. always said. Riley, no matter what, you always get an A plus in my book. Dude, thanks. Now, of course, Amy didn't want to believe me. So now we're getting to uh, OP spilling the tea. And I don't blame her for that either. After all, she's been in a relationship with Joe for a year and is seven plus months pregnant pregnant with his baby who's coming very soon ready or not i couldn't immediately refute everything she said but she showed but i showed her a couple of things first a picture of me in my late teens with my grandmother in front of my house and also my linkedin profile which shows my current job and education i told her to do what she wanted with that info and to please stay safe and take care of herself and then said my goodbyes yes it was very odd unexpected and surreal Sorry that this is long, but I figured my following tale will be interesting in this term. I am not sure if I will update again, maybe in a year or so when I have truly processed everything with lots of therapy and I'm hopefully on to living my best life. As for Joe and Amy, it's up to them to find whatever their path is. I do hope that she wises up and leaves him, but sadly, I'm not confident about that. I'm neither am I. <laughs> I'm sure he will be able to spin all this in his favor because that's what he does, but I also can't make it my problem anymore. Um, and looking to the future, I have some more relevant comments. I think I've determined that because Amy's pregnancy was progressing, he was starting to get nervous about how he would juggle everything and decided to preemptively blow up the marriage in order to get the upper hand. So none of those things were genuine critiques. They were just designed to throw me off balance which does kind of make sense. Um, like, God, what insane, ridiculous commands. Um, so here's the question in a theory. Is it possible that Joe actually won't do anything like what he said to OP because he was like, let me think of the most ridiculous things I could possibly like come up with and just kick that to her until she's like, this is insane. I'm leaving, which technically worked. And he was just, he was, he wasn't like, oh, this is actually me. I'm just saying these things that I believe is like so insane that it will just cause my wife to leave me. Like sort of like his like escape. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, because what we were kind of theorizing and I was kind of theorizing like, 
oh, I think he's going to go to Amy and just pull the exact same script on her. Yeah. But is it possible that he was actually like, no, let me say the most insane, ridiculous things ever just to like get her to kind of like leave me like with the request of like, oh, basically do like a five star banquet every day and like, you know, oh, dress like a oh, 1950s oh, housewife. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Like he would. Yeah. 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 And yeah he's that like, was probably his plan. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, maybe maybe it's somewhere in the middle, but I'm, I'm kind of curious. There's a possibility that he wasn't like about, I guess, those thing, things specifically, but was using it as like a way to just like blow up the marriage. But I'm lo I still think he's in that in that world, but maybe also was like, OK, I know that these requests will uh, on to another comment. Um, how did she take it when you said that you owned the house? She didn't really believe me about the house and said that we were going to have to talk to Joe about it. She said she hoped that I would think about it and not be so stubborn and that the offer remained open to take the money she offered to move out by the end of September. Oh, so yeah. she was like, here you go. Get out. I'll give you some money if you move out like a little early. Wow. Yikes. <laughs> Not today, sweetie. Maybe another comment. Maybe the reason he didn't have more fun money was that he was spending it on her. OP. Oh, yes, definitely. A lot of the golf days now we're seeing were actually spent with her not golfing. So he wasn't the one playing with the balls. Yeah, she was. <laughs> <laughs> and he only played golf once or twice a month, not weekly as he represented to me. Apparently, he convinced her the reason he could never spend the night with her during most of the past year before he moved in with her was that I tended to get high in the evenings and he was always worried I would OD and he wanted to make sure he could keep an eye on me. Oh, my gosh. Wow. The kind of sick, twisted human you have to be to tell a lie like that. On your own wife. On your own wife who you've shared shared 12 years with. I mean, like going through life with someone for 12 years, like there is some sort of connection there of like, all right, you they undoubtedly had a, a hand in like, you know, shaping you and your life and like all these things. And you would think. You, you would think, Riley, you would you would think on to another comment. Uh, did you tell her that he really didn't have a vasectomy? I did tell her, but her answer to that was to insist that he did have one. He just didn't want to tell me because he had only gotten one because although he did want kids, he didn't want to bring them into a world with a drug addicted spouse. God, he just doesn't get any better. In fact, he gets way worse. Oh, but Riley, I think you need to buckle your seatbelt. You know why? Why? We have the final update. Oh my gosh. Of the story. So on to the Joe and Amy front. After my last post, all was quiet for a couple of weeks until Amy, her due date quickly approaching, reached out again to ask if I'd given any more thought to her offer to pay me 17 grand to vacate the house quickly so that she and Joe can move in. Again, this is the house I inherited that I own free and clear, but Joe told her he owns it and that he was giving me time to get my finances together before evicting me. At this point, I decided to package up a lot more evidence of Joe's lies to send to Amy. Ooh. Now we're cooking, now we're cooking. I sent her a copy of the deed and my property tax records showing that the house is in my name only. I sent her copies of my diplomas to prove that I am not in fact a high school dropout. I sent her some info on various professional associations I'm involved in, awards that I have won to show that I actually do have a senior level job and I am not unemployed, as well as proof of my income. I sent her copies of all of my drug test results for the past five years. I have a drug-free workplace and they test two to three times a year. Wow, that came in handy. <laughs> my goodness. Maybe we should institute that policy. I sent her time-stamped photos and text exchanges to show that Joe was still having a romantic relationship with me until July this year. Nothing salacious, just photos of us showing some G-rated affection, exchanging loving words over text, etc. I even found a text exchange from a couple of years ago when we last discussed about him potentially getting a vasectomy with his final decision not to proceed with one. A couple days later, she responded and she still thought I was just kidding. She believed me. Oh, shoot. We got it. However, in the end, it didn't matter as Joe convinced her that he had lied for very good reason. <laughs> 
The way they both tell the story, they met at work and were incredibly drawn to each other in a way that felt inevitable. However, due to Joe being married, he felt that if Amy knew he was, to that point, happily married, she would either turn away from him and miss out on the love of a lifetime, or she would go ahead with an affair, but be consumed with guilt. So to avoid either of these outcomes, and especially to save poor precious Amy from the guilt, Joe decided to create a alternative narrative in which he was in a marriage that had ended for all intents and purposes years ago in all ways but legally because I was an uneducated drug addict who kept relapsing and couldn't get my life together. That was so she could essentially believe he was single. How noble of Joe to bear all of that guilt alone and see. Unfortunately, Amy said she understood and forgave him immediately. Amy, no, that's not what you do. With a baby due any day, I suppose I can kind of understand the desire to justify the lies. Even though the reality is horrifying, I suppose it's not my problem anymore. Amy did have her baby over a month ago, and I guess she and Joe will make whatever life together or not it's meant to be. As for me, I'm doing pretty well. I actually got a big promotion at work. I'm not managing people, which I don't want to do, but we'll be working on higher profile projects with a 40% raise, which starts after the new year. The house is really big for just me, so I have a couple of roommates now. A friend who is also going through a divorce moved in, as well as a younger mid-20s cousin who moved to the city for work. We're all having a lot of fun together. I'm not really ready to date yet. Still in therapy processing all of the marital fallout, which, yeah. listen, OP, take, take your it. time, girl. Yeah, you're good, girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, but getting there and looking forward to whatever new adventures life has to offer. This will probably be my last post in this series anyway, as the saga of Joe and Amy, or at least my role in it, is finished. With us legally divorced and having no ongoing financial or other ties, the best thing I can do is leave them to their own story and get on with my Joe-free next phase. Thank you all for listening to my story for much of 2023. I do appreciate the support and the helpful advice I've received along the way. Wow. 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 <laughs> that was a doozy. That was crazy. Doozy of a story. Amy has made the decision to stop here and move on with her life. Yeah. Right. Do you think in the spirit of, of petty revenge that if you were in, oh, sorry, OP shoes, if you were in OP shoes, would you want to say, you know, whether it be the divorce suit uh, or like other things continuing to go, like continuing to get Amy to leave him? Would you continue down that path for the, the ultimate petty revenge or do you just cut your losses, move on with your life? <sighs> Honestly, I would try to just cut my losses and move on with my life. Yeah. Because if you like go down the petty, petty life, like you got a kid involved and then the kid could like, it would have to live with that. Yeah. You know, being like something that was very bitter from the past. I mean, it would be a little bit of petty revenge, like something small. Yeah. But if you're like going after it, like it, I probably won't, it'll just bring up bad things later in the future yeah well, might as well yeah i'm, I'm 100 percent the same way it's like it is so not worth it and honestly you know we were talking a little bit earlier about like the divorce case like if he got 75 percent, was that actually a good deal you know what's probably a good deal for op getting this stuff out of her hair yeah and just like moving the freak on with her life yeah and being able to enjoy it that's gonna take like at least a year and a half two years i mean it'll always be in the back of her head but like yeah it needs to be not recent and yeah. that takes time oh something like this 12 year relationship and like there's probably stuff maybe that op chose to admit uh, omit that like always got to be red flags i'm sorry like yeah something we have rose we get rose tinted glasses um but my last question for you i think this one will be a little bit of a of a of a hardball everyone answer in the comments what uh -oh. you think below um do you think that op is the a-hole for not doing everything she can not for petty reasons to get amy out of the relationship with the husband Ooh, that's a really good point because like one amy is pretty young yeah and like it does first relationship first relationship it does not seem like a place amy needs to be i feel like honestly she did everything that she could like she sent her all the receipts all the yes. documentations like what else more could she like what else more could she do honestly i feel like exactly she did it all it's it's uh, i mean yeah 
Do you think she could have done more? No, no. I mean, like maybe if it was the first time it was like she just showed her LinkedIn and like something and like pictures or whatever. So it's like, okay, that wasn't that crazy. Maybe you could go a little bit more. But then she went. I mean, all the the drug tests, the texts showing that he didn't have the vasectomy, uh, all of the degrees, the awards, everything like she really like you said, she basically laid out all the receipts that one would reasonably need. Yeah. Hey, guess what, John? What? I got a little got a little present for you. Really? Yeah. Okay. Someone from our OKOP community oh, no. submitted a Reddit story. Okay. And I want you to read it. Ooh, I'm excited for this surprise. Great transition. Thank you. Entitled Dad says, My child is an investment, and hopefully I can live off of her later. Riley, our children investments so you can live off later. Dude, my great grandpa was an investment. He uh he had eleven, he had ten brothers and one sister, and they all worked on the farm. So I mean, depending on what year you were born, it could be an investment. You know what? That sounds like ROI, return on investment. I, female 23, uh, went to a store to buy some containers for I was making some jam that day. And this entitled father was buying a birthday balloon for his three to four year old, for his three to four year old daughter. He said to the cashier, geez, kids these days are expensive. My child is an investment and hopefully she pays off after college so I can retire and hopefully make my life a little easier. By the way, the way he said it, I felt like he was just wanting someone to leech off of because I have heard of cases of family tracing that some parents feel entitled enough to keep some of their kids back and thus take care of them to the point where they don't even get to have a partner and thus a family dead end. And I thought of something that might ease her existence, the little daughter. College no longer works because of debt and increasing prizes and is college no longer works because of debt, increasing prizes increasing prices and stagnant wages. So I said, the schooling system no longer works. The new way is Hustler's University. Some of you would say that Andrew Tate is a misogynist. I'll be honest. I thought OP was talking about like, like, you know, the school of hard knocks, like just a, a metaphor, but he's literally talking about Andrew Tate's Hustler's University. Oh, God. Um, and to that, I quote you, even the darkest individuals can shine a light on valuable lessons. You might not agree on some things about him, but his business advice is on point. Plus, in his Discord server, they have a chat where everyone posts their victories, whether exercise or money gains. I saw in there that a boy was 14 and said that he quit his part time job after his course and has started a clothing brand off which he's doing quite well for himself and it, and is and which I would highly recommend you skip school and buy Andrew Tate's course, binge watch it all and get stuck uh, and don't get stuck in making your life goal and and, and, uh, don't get stuck and make your life goals a reality. Just imagine when that 14 year old turns 25, I bet he would have a house sooner than a lot of you who went to school. Riley, is this a bot? (laughs) Uh, for this is Andrew Tate obviously knows of our incredible podcast and our incredible non Andrew Tate fans as they should be um, female audience. Yeah. Right. Is Andrew Tate trying to usurp his way into our podcast with you as his surrogate <laughs> <laughs> placing this story in front of us <laughs> to attempt to attempt to pitch <gasps> Hustlers University to our to our I broke my cardinal rule. No free sponsors. I just hope that this guy was like joking. Like the guy in the, the old, like I was I'm just thinking that this guy is an old man and um <laughs> cracking a joke. He's just cracking a joke. Also, I just realized that OP wait, I female 23. <gasps> You're right. <laughs> I just, I totally, because it was like very at the beginning, I literally completely forgot that OP was a woman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is very interesting. Again, going back to our theory, Andrew Tate is trying to infiltrate. He's like, the only way that the incredible, amazing women of the OKOP podcast is to have a woman share this message. Yeah. It's the only way. But it's actually Andrew Tate under a... This is kind of crazy that this showed up in our subreddit. So, you know, listen, go downvote it, everyone. But yeah, go take, yeah, go take, go destroy Curious Kittens karma in our subreddit, guys. That would be great. We'll give you an update on it later. But thank you so much for joining us on this long episode. Me and Light Riley love and appreciate you. Thank you. See you on the next one.